profile pictures. They could mean so much to someone, or very little. But that depends on their perspective. Profile pictures could simply be something they found on a website and put it as their profile picture because it looks cool. Or they could be consistently changed between days or months at a time. But sometimes, there could be deeper meaning behind the one who chooses them. Here's what I've done with that whole profile picture scene for the past few years, all the way back to 9th grade around 2016. Or around there at least. Back then, I wasn't an artist by any stretch of the word. All I did was see art online that looked cool from DeviantArt when they had that light green background, and then put it as my profile picture for a few weeks or something. After that, I started to draw, and it wasn't that great of a time in terms of learning how to do so. Then, I began that whole journey by practice tracing and then referencing. But as you may have guessed, the outcomes were below what my expectations are now. But in those days, it was a proud moment for me to draw something that I could only have imagined. Granted, it was tracing and referencing heavily, but it was a start. But nothing solid really made me choose a definite profile picture. Still stuck to things that other people made. That one was a rather quick year, but moving onward to 2017, I started using DeviantArt as a platform to post artwork and things that were only marginally better. I moved on from tracing and went to referencing, but only little came out of that. A majority of the drawings from that year were based on original characters that people made, and I just drew them for the hell of it. That allowed me to have some sort of creative freedom that was separate from canon stuff. All of which I'm glad I did, but still, this story is cringy as shit. I even drew some Halo and Fallout weapons too, which went... well... Dude, I don't know what happened, but I was so big on the buttstock and then everything just went downhill from there. That probably explains why I draw asses bigger than what I intend them to look like. I remember at the time I was a big fan of some pony YouTube channels like Brony Monster and Rarity Dash, and made fan art of them. Their profile pictures and general personalities inspired me a lot. Watching their stuff and re-watching it again at that time gave me a push into making some kind of character. But as for something that would be profile picture worthy, for some reason, that didn't happen. Couldn't tell you why, but I guess I was stubborn. Moving down the line into late 2017, I moved from PlayStation to PC. Big, big move, and that was on a Lenovo Yoga laptop. It ran some basic stuff, and man, that was slow. And that was at a time where I did not know anything about computers. If you were to tell me about Intel, Ryzen, NVIDIA, I wouldn't know a damn thing. But it ran games decently for the power it was given on a $600 laptop at the time. I met a lot of people with their own OCs, profile pictures, and unique personalities. And that gave me a decent grasp on how people worked in certain communities and what they thought. But that furthered the push on making some sort of suitable profile picture, and I eventually found one that I wanted for a short while. It isn't an OC, nor was it something I entirely planned, but I stuck with it ever since. Countess Kalaratura, from the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic episode, the main attraction. She had an iconic pose, and I made a hand-drawn rendition of it that I liked for that time. But after that, I never changed it. The MLP movie came out shortly after, and that was a big eye-opener for me. Tempest, the whole style in general, everything was absolutely amazing. I drew a few bits of fan art from it as well, but the profile picture never changed. I took a small hiatus from drawing until the beginning of 2018, and they mostly consisted of a few people from Gary's Mod Dark RP. Wow, what a fucking time that was. Lots of drama, plenty of arguments, but it was still fun. But moving on to late 2018, it was the last year of high school, and I started to finally move on to my own poses and styles for the majority of the time. I still had inspiration from other artists, but long gone were the days of tracing, and very rarely would I ever do referencing. Shit, I even made pony art in one class and it was a great time. No one made fun of me for liking that stuff, and as far as I can remember, it was all positivity. But then again, that was probably because it was the last year of high school and we were all becoming adults. I made a few more OCs and then began this whole YouTube thing with a headset mic, and wow, that sucked ass. Some time passed and I wanted to make a banner for the channel to make it more official, and eventually drew one of my OCs, Emanation Harvest. At the time, she was the mascot for everything, and I considered her to be the big change in a new profile picture. But that never happened either. Closest I got to that was making that ASMR channel, but that's been long gone ever since. 
I met a few people from the YouTube fanfic reading scene, and it was quite the ride. I drew a few more side artworks and got inspired from a few more artists like Ritter, and then the MLP movie special Rainbow Road Trip came out. That was a nice push for me to progress with a changed style, but I didn't really change that much. I made a few more Rarity Dash fan arts at the time and then moved on to the thing that changed my perspective of the color pink. Now, I liked the color pink at the time, but man, who would have fucking guessed that it would impact me this much, even though it probably shouldn't have. August 7th, 2019, the start of freshman year at college, I made a prototype OC that had pink hair with blue highlights, and a wild looking style to the hair. Never even came up with a name for her, and I thought nothing of it at the time. Just an OC that I made for fun. I went on to a new style that dealt with a John line that resembled the princess kind of look, and that was my main go-to. I kept that up until I decided to make that pink pony again and named her Materlia Harvest. I took a few breaks, mostly because of laziness, but made more art with a few more inspirations from artists like Yakov Levod and Red Jet Green. Nearing the end of the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic series, I made a new piece that included both Emanation and Materlia as a duo, to update the channel banner and overall look. And I don't even think I changed the banner up until like recently. Oh, and the cyberpunk hype was overflowing on the internet, and eventually I made Materlia with Mantis Blades, and that was a tough one. Not because it was difficult to make, but because I did feel like changing the profile picture to that at the time. But still nothing. And then the hype for My Little Pony A New Generation came up, and I've loved the styles of both Izzy and Pip. At the end of sophomore year at college in 2021, there was a cool little animation by Sean Keller, and that featured the one character we probably know well, Athena, and that was simply amazing. His style is so smooth and has a very charming look, overall it is very nice. Some more time passed by and junior year of college started. And then a little after that time, My Little Pony and New Generation came out, and I drew a lot of fan art because of that. And then I updated a few small details like chest fluff, stray hairs, and also transitioned hair colors from one to the other, from bottom to top, left and right, you name it. And all that thanks to Izzy Moonbow. But even through all of that, a new generation, new art style, new everything, still, nothing was profile picture changing in my eyes. Then I finally moved on to digital art in November of that same year, and that was a rough ride. Oh god, don't take that out of context. <laughs> Anyways, I dealt with rough edges, me not understanding the rendering process between a JPEG and a PNG. All of that was tough for me. But that was what I needed to begin the journey of improving my art style. I eventually drew more MLP G5 artwork, and it still never gets old. Eventually, I watched an anime called Akame Ga Kill and been hooked on that for weeks. Went as far as drawing quite a lot of fan art for that anime. And that gave me a good edge on what to do with shading, as well as a lot of help from other people giving me some nice criticism. But at that time, I haven't drawn anime in a while. And that paired with being new to digital art, that was a special kind of hellish effort. Seriously, I wanted to grab my non-functional drawing pen and shove it up my fucking ass. When it came to drawing anime, I had to go back to referencing, but eventually it improved a bit. But even with anime, none of that made me change my profile picture to anything else. Still the same Countess Coloratura for years. I finally drew Materia digitally, and that was a close shot to changing it. Very close, like a pube hair short. But it ended up just being a new profile picture for this, the gaming channel. But still nothing that made me change everything that had to do with Countess Coloratura as my profile picture. Got into a jazz hopes craze and still love her style, but nothing. However, I finally, truly got inspired by the wonderful Strafe Blitz. July 22nd, 2022, I took a deep look and analyzed how Strafe Blitz's style worked, and I fell in love with their face structure, especially the jawline. But with that deep and heavy inspiration, I made a few more G5-related artworks and found the style I like to this day. Both Strafe Blitz and Red Jet Green have that similar look to how they make their characters feel both adorable and cool at the same time. And when I kept thinking about other artists like Ember's Laments and Strafe Blitz put together, same with a couple other ones, it turned into this mashup. And then, the idea of Materlia sparked on August 19th, 2022. That day made no fucking sense as to where I got all that inspiration from, if you could even call it inspiration. And it was so jumbled that I tried to put it into coherent sentences, but all I could do was put it into a list. 
I played Dying Light 2's campaign after months of leaving it in the dust for about 5 months in my Steam library, and that was about 2 days ago after posting this video. I thought about Dying Light 2's music and loved it, been obsessing over it ever since. I looked at more artwork from Strafe Blitz and Red Jet Green and thought to myself, man, I really need to draw again. And then, for some reason, I recorded some GTA roleplay moments, ate some noodles, talked to some friends, took a nap, got frustrated, and began the drawing journey. I began drawing at around 5 or 6 p.m., then watched the Shadow the Hedgehog real-time fan dub with some friends when it premiered at that day. And then after that, I continued drawing, but stumbled a lot. Like, I mean, it was a lot. A lot more than whenever I sucked dick. <laughs> God damn it. I got the bodywork done, rather quickly, and I was satisfied with that. But the head, for whatever reason, got me stuck. Stuck more than those step bro steps as pornos. I tried again, and again to make the muzzle and head shape work, but every time I kept on falling back. But that was up until I realized that I was getting discouraged because I kept imagining what the finished product would look like, rather than focusing on the here and now. I eventually pushed through the initial frustration and finished up the rough draft quicker than I thought. And then I pondered into making this really look in depth. I thought about adding clothes that don't look too cliche, but making them not too overly out of bounds. Even adding glasses for that extra bit of style. Instead of making the sweater cover her chest fluff, what if I just didn't cover that? After the rough drafts were made, I went to making the real deal outlines and took my time. And all throughout that duration, I was still listening to Dying Light 2 music, changing between inspirational to adrenaline rushing. And after all that time I spent around maybe five hours, I finished up most of everything that night. But I woke up this morning and wanted to fix up some small details to make this work properly. I touched up the shading, made some sharp edges, and added in some blue highlights. And once all the layers were properly arranged, I posted them up on DeviantArt, Derpy Buru, Twitter, YouTube, you name it. All four versions. No clothes and no glasses, only glasses, only clothes, and all combined. And that's when it hit me. I need to move on from the past and bring in the new. Now, everyone works differently. Sometimes they may have the complete opposite thing, or maybe they have like an in-between. But for me, I can't keep on being stuck in the past, even though some things I still cling on to to this day. But this one really works for me. So, I'm changing this profile picture of Countess to this one. Honestly, I never would have expected this, especially how big I'm making this scene. But with so many feelings and other things happening in the world, this really was the big push I needed. But I've talked long enough, and I have had this burning question in my mind for quite a while, actually. And it's pretty much what your thoughts are about profile pictures or just how you express yourself in the world in general. What do you do to express yourself? How important is it to you? Do you change things often, or are you comfortable with what you have now, or what you had back then? Let me know in the comments, and I highly encourage this if you have the time. It's been a burning question in my mind, and I thought, eh, I don't want to do a poll on this, I'd rather do it in a video. And also, side reason is because, yeah, I'm being deadass honest, I don't know if what I've said this entire video is complete nonsense, or if I'm slightly sane and thinking that other people also share the same sentiment or something similar. But anyway, thank you all very much for watching this video, and live life to the fullest.